Hi, I'm Vivian. And I'm Jason. And this is Burger of the Week. Each week, we discuss an episode of the Fox animated series, Bob's Burgers, and then we create a themed burger based on that episode. And we've made it to season two. Yes, success. Success. So I guess before we start talking about this episode, we ran a poll last week to find out what the winning season one burger would be. From all of our episodes of season one, all the winners of each episode... After we rock, paper, scissored, or we voted, we used those winning burgers to... Make a poll. Mm. And 62 people voted. And the winner with 12 votes is the Provolone Ranger. Excellent. Coming in second place is BR Zest with 11 votes. So the Provolone Ranger was from the Spaghetti... Western episode. Spaghetti Western, yep. Mm -hmm. And BR Zest was Bed and Breakfast. Yep. And then we have Guilty as Charred with 10 votes. Mm -hmm. And that was from uh, Hamburger Dinner Theater. Yep. So thank you very much for everybody who voted. Yes, thank you. Uh, It's exciting and kind of weird to see like which ones ended up on the top because we had a little bit of a like a wrestling match right at the top for a while. It yeah, was it, of... was, it was neck and neck yeah. from several different burgers. They mm-hmm. kept coming on top and getting shoved down. And Yeah, like for a while, Chianti Reeves was the top. And then for a good long while, Guilty as Charred was. And suddenly I checked today and whoop, it's the Provolone Ranger. So Excellent. That was that's a good... our season one winner. And I feel pretty proud of that one. Yeah, yeah. it was a good so, one. I get, does that make me the season one winner? No. Oh. No, it doesn't. Rude. Because there are no winners when it comes to podcasts. Oh. Says the sore loser. <laughs> Sounds like something a loser would say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's get to our episode today. We're going to be talking about season two, episode one, The Belchies. This episode was written by John Schroeder and directed by Buon Lim and Kyung Hee Lim. And this episode originally aired March 11th, 2012. So the store next door was Uncle Marty's Breast Pumps. Which I thought that was a reference to something, but it's not. It's no, just... It's just supposed to be kind of... Creepy? Uh, a little bit weird. Yeah, not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, but I don't really like it. So I looked that up and in my research about Uncle Marty's Breast Pumps, I found that according to Lauren Bouchard, the creator... This is his favorite store next door. Really? Yes. There's so many better ones. I know. And it was uh, in the Bob's Burgers cast and creator share their favorites from 100 episodes. So this was an article from last year. Mm -hmm. But Lauren Bouchard says this is his favorite gag. Yeah, this is one of my least favorites. I've got (laughs) to say, Lauren, I don't agree with you. That's okay. I was just, like, wagging my finger at the microphone like he's going to be able to see it. <laughs> or our listeners oh, are going to be able to... medium, apparently. Our listeners can see it. They can feel the airflow. Yeah, could you feel it? Because it's there. <laughs> the exterminator van was Rats All... Wait, no, it wasn't. It was Stan Berman, King of Vermin. Oh, yeah. We've First got a time. new v- exterminator van, guys. Oh, so exciting. Breaking the monotony. And I like that. Stan Berman, King of Vermin. Yeah. It's cute. It's not a reference to anything, but it rhymes and I like it. Mm -hmm. We had one burger of the day, which is I'm Mad About Saffron, made with no saffron. Yeah, this one was kind of a dud for me. I think it's kind of funny because saffron is obviously a very expensive ingredient. Oh, yeah, Bob's not going to. So Bob's obviously not going to. And maybe he's (laughs) mad about saffron, so he doesn't like it. Instead of, I'm mad about saffron. I just love it. Maybe he's like, I'm mad about saffron because it slighted me. It's like taking it in a different direction. Yeah, it's not the best. Eh, It's not my favorite. No. Bob, you've done better. Yeah. And I think that the two of us are going to be able to beat you this episode. Just watch out, Bob Belcher. We're coming for you. Yeah, we're coming (laughs) for your burger board. That's right. 
We have a new voice actor this episode, and he's going to be a, playing a reoccurring character. We have Bobby Tisdale as Zeke, and this episode features a song by Cindy Lauper. She sings Taffy Butt right at the end, which of course is a parody of the Goonies Are Good Enough song right at the end of the movie The Goonies. So right off the bat, this episode is a parody of the 1985 movie The Goonies, yep. directed by Richard Donner. I got to admit, I had no idea. Really? Zero clue when I first saw this episode because I had never seen The Goonies up until last year. Oh, I thought that you had watched it when you were a kid. Never. Huh. This was the very first time I watched it, which was 2016. My goodness. Yep. So when I watched this episode, The Belchies, I had no idea that it was a parody of a movie. Yeah, I had no idea either, because I hadn't watched The Goonies until yesterday. (laughs) (laughs) I had never seen the movie. Even after watching The Goonies, I still didn't get the fact that this episode's called The Belchies and The Goonies, The Belchies. Yeah, I I didn't get that until (laughs) literally like a few days ago. Oh, wow. Okay. So, So there's that. Jason, what do you think of The Goonies? Is it a movie that you enjoy? Yeah, I think it's great. I think I wish I would have watched it as a kid Mm -hmm. because it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of adventure. There's a lot of camaraderie between all the kids. And I like it because the kids are kids. Like they're acting like actual friends would act. It doesn't seem overwritten and like, oh, kids would never say that or they'd never do this or whatever. It seemed very real despite the situation that they're put in okay so i liked it a lot all right i think it's a great movie and do you feel like bob's burgers does a good job at parodying this that movie no no i don't oh okay i don't think there was enough references i don't think that they could have made it a lot more obvious okay i understand they want to make it their own and like take the idea or the feeling of the movie and put it into a situation that the Belcher children can find themselves in. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they did enough. Yeah, I think they could have pushed it further. Yeah. Definitely. I'm glad that it didn't end up being entirely about the kids, though, because I do like Bob and Linda's little side story Mm -hmm. in this episode. So I'm not overly upset about the not-so-explicit references. Mm Mm-hmm. Because it makes it, I think, enjoyable for anybody, right. regardless of whether or not if you've, you've seen, seen the, the show, movie. the movie, right? Um, but yeah, they could have gone further. I think even just a little bit, mm-hmm. just by a little bit. All right, so let's get started. The Belcher children search for treasure on the beach with a metal detector. They find Ollie buried in the sand, and then discover Andy, Jimmy Jr., and Zeke on the beach with them. Jimmy Jr. and Zeke mention their plans to watch the Taffy Factory demolition tomorrow. Teddy tells the story of the Taffy Factory treasure. So this is a thing that's, uh, it's, it's kind of funny because Tina has zero peripheral vision in this scene and it <laughs> is so weird to me. Like, it's, it's cartoon, I right? I know, I know. It's like, it's if it's just... not in the frame, the characters can't see it. I know. And it's, but this is, t- like, Tina just has none. Because Jimmy Jr. and Zeke are so close to them, and they're wrestling at the time, but she doesn't see them until Andy points at them. (laughs) Oh, look who's right beside you, wrestling. Yeah. She's like, have you seen your brother, who is two feet to my left? Oh my god. (laughs) Anyway, it just, it made me laugh really hard, Mm -hmm. and it wasn't an actual joke, so it was pretty great. (laughs) Limitations of animation. Yeah. I love Teddy. In this episode, oh because God. he is acting like a grown up to the kids. He's not mm. being the child in this situation. Like, a lot of times we'll see Teddy being immature and a little bit dim and slow, but this time he gets one up on the kids. And yeah. it's nice to see them just do draw the treasure map for the kids and go around this curve, and there's three little rocks, and then oh go around God. the other curve. Oh, it's, it's great. I love that scene. Especially his, I'm having a BYOB, bring your own bean. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Can I put you down for garbanzo? (laughs) Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Entire, uh, we mentioned last episode when we were talking about season one that the kids start to be a little bit more like 
kids Mm -hmm. in the later seasons. And we don't have as many jokes where they kind of understand adult things. Mm -hmm. So I really like that Jean says... Well, I believe the term is leg warmer <laughs> when Teddy's talking about a bootlegger, bootlegger because, of course, he wouldn't know what a bootlegger is. Right. Like, Gina's 11. 11 years old. He's not going to know what a bootlegger is. Like, it's nice to see that the writers are creating jokes out of a misunderstanding. It happens of again having, with Jean at the end of the episode. Yeah, instead of having them know things that they shouldn't know. We see Louise, even despite Teddy poking fun at them and making a obviously false map yeah she still takes the map and is like all right let's go let's go that night the kids take teddy's map and go on a quest to find caffrey's taffy factory's treasure tina invites jimmy jr who invites zeke and the pesto twins tag along louise is annoyed with the tagalongs of course bob and linda have a scheduled sex night and she tries to spice things up with sexy dice so we've got our first Goonies reference when Jimmy Pesto rides into the frame. It's just like a second long. Yeah, it's very subtle. Mm -hmm. We see a sign in the background saying Fratelli and Sons. And the Fratellis were, of course, the three criminals after the Goonies. Mm -hmm. When we were watching the movie last night, as soon as you saw that it was the Fratellis, you were like, oh, that's the sign in the episode. That's so you, you were a little excited about that. Yeah, I was excited to see, like, what I would be able to pick out of it. Mm-hmm. I have to say, if I was Bob or Linda, Louise's cheerfulness would immediately tip me off. Yeah, like, you know Louise pretty mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. You should be suspicious. But they're trying to be sneaky as well. So they're not thinking about what their kids, they're thinking about what their kids would think about them. So they're like... Yeah trying to be sneaky yeah it's... but then we see louise take all of the dishes with her <laughs> all the dishes with her and she just dumps them she drops them on the floor and they all break and i'm like <laughs> linda you didn't notice that oh no it's fantastic anyway linda's linda's too busy being like a horny baby about mm-hmm. everything so yeah. <laughs> i love that your response is basically bob's response like ugh, ugh. at first <laughs> Although in this episode, he is pretty into it. He is pretty excited about their Sunday sex night or whatever it is. Yeah, but he's also not very excited about the dice. Okay, would you be excited about the dice? No, and they weren't really sexy dice. I mean, we didn't see all the sides. No, we didn't. We didn't. But his reaction to them is pretty great because he's just like, (laughs) oh, sounds sexy. (laughs) <laughs> and you're like, oh, Bob, you're giving try it, your it all. once more with feeling, okay? <laughs> yeah. So Louise gives everybody a nickname when they break into the Taffy factory. Yep. She calls Zeke Doofus, Jimmy Jr. Braceface, Andy is Dingle, Ollie is Barry, Gene is Gas Tank, and Blabbermouth is Tina. Mm. So do you think each one represents a character from the Goonies? I don't actually. And mm-hmm. I kind of like that because I don't feel like we're breaking the characters from Bob's so that they'll fit the mm-hmm. characters from right. the Goonies. Louise is kind of like Mikey in the sense that she's determined. Mm-hmm. She really believes that there is treasure just like Mikey does. But yep. she's also annoyed with everyone, you know, and she's frustrated and she doesn't really care about them as a community. She just wants that treasure for herself. Mm-hmm. I was trying to think of who everybody else is, and Gene is really obviously Chunk. Why? Because he's a bit larger? No, because (laughs) he keeps messing up, and those mistakes or those little quirks of his end up leading them closer to the treasure. Exactly. When he falls and then ends up revealing the elevator, that brings them a little bit closer, and then when he wants to fart in the fart opening, I guess it is... (laughs) He leads Louise down and out of the elevator. And then later in the episode, he starts banging on a wall. And we immediately think that he's just being stupid and wasting time. But it ends up getting them out of the... The factory? Out of the factory, yeah. Tina seems like Andy to me. She's a little thirsty for uh, Jimmy Jr. Yeah, she is. But then she changes at the end, which is nice. She does. She does a a turn, which is good. But I think you're right. I don't think 
any one character match has an equivalent in the Goonies. Yeah. And that's pretty smart because they would have to really rebrand mm-hmm. these Bob's characters and it would kind of ruin it. Yeah. I, I know I mentioned earlier that Zeke is always very encouraging of Jimmy Jr. And I love him in this moment because he's so enthusiastic when Jimmy Jr. starts dancing and he's like, yeah, footloose it. Oh, man. I just I'm so glad Zeke is here now. I'm so glad he's going to be a reoccurring character. I really love him. Yeah. He always makes me laugh. The way he positively reinforces pretty much everything that Jimmy Jr. does. Mm -hmm. Which is really nice because nobody really does anything for Jeju. Yeah, I guess. Because his dad's not supportive. He doesn't really have any friends at school. Except for Zeke. Exactly, that we know about. Mm -hmm. So introducing Zeke starts to flesh out Jimmy Jr., Mm -hmm. so we get a little bit more from him because of Zeke, which is really nice. Yeah, that's true. The kids find an elevator and accidentally set off a booby trap, causing it to plummet down the shaft. Linda goes to check on her kids and finds a note in Tina's diary that tells her where they are. Louise goes off in search of the treasure, but falls into another booby trap. Bob and Linda go to the taffy factory. So the kids are in the elevator. Mm -hmm. They just found it. Yeah. And... While pulling on the elevator levers, they start to get squished together. And Tina's like, yeah, I'm okay with this because she's getting squished up against Jimmy Jr. Of course. What a perv. (laughs) Something is wrong here because whoever drew this or animated this, they messed up her face real bad. Okay, are we certain that that's not just Because it's so wrong. It looks so bad. Is that Tina's romance face, though? Her romance face (laughs) is creepy serial killer face. (laughs) It is... It's Tina. so bad. Maybe and it doesn't move. Tina. As soon as she's mushed up against him, she holds the same pose the entire time. <laughs> like, maybe it's only like two seconds, but it feels like an eternity. <laughs> For Because you. her face is all messed up. Her boob is squashed up against his <laughs> chest. She's probably happy about that. Absolutely. But she looks terrifying. <laughs> I wish I could like... Put a screenshot right here while we're talking and then people could see it. But we'll put one up on Twitter. If you guys haven't watched the episode in a while, you can just skip to this part because it's wrong. I do love Gene's comment afterwards where he says, honey, it's pretty obvious Jimmy Jr.'s not into you. And I'm usually not that good at picking up on vibes. Did you know that mom and dad were a thing? (laughs) Oh, my God. I love Gene. Mm -hmm. This moment is hilarious. Because it's so on point. And it's just, it's perfect because, I don't know, like, Bob and Linda are not that affectionate in front of their kids. Mm -hmm. So it makes enough sense to me that Gene would actually not really pick up on it for a while. (laughs) Because he's that kind of kid. He knows there's mom and dad. I know, but it's like... But maybe that's where it ends for him. He doesn't really... he doesn't think about... He doesn't think about the romance. And I don't think you do as a kid, right? You're not really thinking about your parents as romantic partners to each other. Because they're just mom and dad. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really sweet. It's innocent. And it's so funny. It cracks me up every single time. Especially because Jimmy Jr. doesn't really seem to be that into Tina. I know. Every once in a while, there'll be a moment where he is. But it's they're mostly off in their relationship. Yeah. Are they on this week? Are they on? No, they're usually off. Yeah. Um. This is still a thing that bugs me about Jimmy Jr. The fact that he's super wishy-washy about his feelings towards Tina. So that's going to last for a while. Yep. And I'm going to keep not liking it, I'm telling you now. That's going to last for like a long while. So you like that Linda messed with Bob a little bit in this episode, didn't you? Mess with him how? By slipping a little pill into his food. You I think it's it? funny, but it's a little not fair. Oh, no. It's totally unfair. You should never drug your spouse. I mean, it would make sense if they weren't planning on going out anywhere, but sometimes plans change and you have to go look for your kids in the middle of the night. At a taffy factory. That's totally a normal thing you have to do most of the time. And <laughs> your persistent erection might cause problems. Persistent erection is not a phrase I thought I would hear on this podcast, I have to say. Well, I didn't expect Linda to slip somebody a penis pill. 
That I seems did not either. Bizarre. I do like her ridiculous reasoning for it. She's like, well, sometimes you want to ride a roller coaster twice and you don't want to wait in line. <laughs> it is it is a good analogy. Yeah, it's pretty great. Please don't do that. Yeah. Don't follow Linda's example. At least warn your man if you're going to do that. Because well, you know, maybe he has a heart condition. Maybe your husband's just not cool with that. And you should ask him if he would be interested in doing that. And let him make his own decisions. Mm-hmm. Oh, when Andy and Ollie leave Louise in her... Um, in the pit that she fell into? Yeah, when they leave her in the pit that she fell into and they're talking about capitals Mm -hmm. of different states, he says Las Vegas is the capital of Nevada. I didn't know that that was not true because I know almost no cities in the state of Nevada other than Las Vegas. And I looked it up to see which one was the capital and it's Carson City. Yeah, Carson City. Which I have literally never heard of in my life. Oh, really? (laughs) No, never. So it's bizarre because a lot of the other capitals that he was saying, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I've heard of that city. It may not be the city that I think of. Like, of course, a lot of people assume that New York City is the capital of New York State. It's not. It's Albany. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no idea. Carson City. I don't know. American geography, guys. But listeners, I challenge you to name our capitals. Yeah. We only have, what, 13 provinces? Yeah, honestly, I challenge you to know, like, half of our provinces, because most of the time, it's like, oh, um, I think Ontario, right? And then there's, like, a French spot, like, Quebec, (laughs) and then BC, and that's it. And that's all they know. And there's a cold place, right? There's a real cold place. Right. Yeah, guys, there's a lot of those in Canada. It's beside Alaska. (laughs) Alaska should have been ours. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we're getting we're getting <laughs> geographical it's up in here. To us. Right anyway. <laughs> this is what you come to this podcast for. Geographical debates? Yeah, definitely. So do you notice <laughs> any uh almost references to how I met your mother in this episode? No. Bob doing the naked man. Oh god, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so of course it's a cartoon, uh-huh. so you gotta cover him up somehow. So he has a pillow in front of him, but Linda leaves to go check on the kids, comes back, and Bob is lying all seductively, seductively with yeah. a pillow in front of him, totally nude. Go Bob. Oh, I love it. Because it Bob is like super into this right now. But and it's nice to see that he's actually like going for it. Yeah, he's but it's interested. it's his way of getting rid of those stupid dice. It's like, you know what? I don't oh, need these true. dice to get sexy. That's true. Let me just toss these in the trash and let's throw my clothes in there with them. Confidence is like the sexiest thing about a person. The confidence so, man. So there is a moment in this episode where we're kind of breaking the idea of Louise as a kid. Because she makes a reference to the movie 127 Hours. When she says, my arm's not stuck in a crevice, so I don't need to cut it off like that impatient idiot. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that this is something she could have picked up from, like, friends at school or just in the media. Someone talking about it. And she finds out that there's a movie where a guy cuts his own arm off. Right. But she is nine years old. So I think we're kind of right on that line of whether or not this is something she would actually know about. Sidebar. I have not seen that movie, and I probably will never see that movie, because the idea of having to cut your own arm off is, like, a super nightmare for me, so... It's terrifying. That's never gonna happen. It's a terrifying (laughs) concept. Anyway, um... Did Taff remind you of any characters from The Goonies? I mean, I don't want to say Sloth, but I'm gonna say it anyway. He's definitely Sloth. (laughs) He's just not... An actual human being. Right. Like Sloth. Of course. I wanted to bring up the kids hiding from their parents that they left, that they snuck out. Okay. Did you ever sneak out as a kid? No. No, I never did. Because honestly, I lived in the suburbs. And even though I had a few friends that lived nearby, I used to spend time with them all the time anyway. So it wasn't like I needed to sneak out and do anything. Mm Mm-hmm. And then when I was a teenager, my parents would just let me go out and would just ask me to call if I was going to be late. So there was never any reason to sneak out, really. Mm. Did you? Jason, are you about to tell me that you snuck out, like, all the time? 
that you were just this rebel and I didn't know about it. Totally. What a delinquent child you were. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. I don't know if I can take this. My heart is not strong enough. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. (laughs) I snuck out once. Um, I snuck out when I was 17. Mm. I was walking home, my girlfriend at the time, and it was late. Like, it was really late. Um, Mm. Probably, like, two or something. And neither of us had any money to call, like, a cab or something. So, and I, she had to get home. So I walked her home and she did not live close. So me being the non-rebel, I left a note for my mom in case she woke up and saw that I wasn't in my bed. (laughs) Oh, I put a note directly on my door, taped it to the door, said, Mom, I'm walking her home. I'll be back in like an hour and a half, whatever. So, yeah. Is that really sneaking out then if you leave a note? Well, she wasn't, she didn't know that I left. Oh, goodness. (laughs) So, Tina's pretty bad at this whole leave a lump under your blankets to fool your parents. Because Mm -hmm. she didn't do that. She left a post-it note on her pillow that said, Tina. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know. (laughs) And Tina puts a post-it note on her pillow that says, Tina. And this is the joke that kills me this whole episode. It's not even a joke, and I love it. (laughs) Anyway, moving on. Moving on. Louise bonds with a taffy dummy while her family searches for her. The Belchers find the Pestos and Zeke stuck in a booby trap, and they help them out. Everyone finds Louise just as the demolition begins. Oh boy, so now we've got a time lock. We have to get out of here real soon. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, they're all dead. Yeah, the building's gonna collapse. Mm -hmm. I really like Louise in this episode. Actually, she totally works for me. All of her sarcasm is just perfect. Like, Kristen Schaal does such a great job at selling it with her whole heart. Mm -hmm. Because when Louise is sort of bonding with Taff and going maybe a little bit crazy, Mm -hmm. she has this big dramatic turn and she says, Oh, another Taff tantrum right on schedule. Big news. (laughs) Taff is upset. Everybody (laughs) gather around. I love it. Louise is going to be a terrible girlfriend and mother, though, because she's going to be super sarcastic. (laughs) Because even if, like, the smallest situation, she'll blow it way out of proportion. Oh, big time. Big time. Like, I'm trying to imagine Louise as a moody teenager dating someone for the first time and just getting real sarcastic. That poor guy. Every time. The poor guy. Yeah. He won't even know what's hit him. Yeah. And then later, of course, when... When Bob and Linda are trying to get her out and Bob mentions, well, is there anything down there that could help you up? And she goes, oh, wait, here's a grappling hook. And an escalator. Silly me. And I I love it. It's just, (laughs) it's fantastic. This is the Louise I love. Yeah. And she talks herself into learning a lesson. She does. She totally does. I love Mm -hmm. it. It's great. I do like that the construction worker is obviously friends with Teddy. Yeah, referencing Teddy's bean party. I like it because, yeah, he does manual labor. He's a contractor, right? Mm -hmm. So it would make sense that he would be friends with, like, a construction worker, or at least know a construction worker. Right, yeah. And it's just kind of a nice little gag at that moment. Mm -hmm. You know? A little callback. Yeah, that the construction worker is distracted while he's doing the demolition because he's talking about Teddy's party. Mm -hmm. He's complaining about Teddy's party, really. I would have liked it better if it was in another episode that that happened. Ooh, okay. So it transcends episodes. So it's brought up again, maybe in another, like, couple episodes later. Hmm. Because then people would have just been like, oh, that's silly offhand reference. And then other people would have been like, I know that reference. That's from an earlier episode. I do like it here, though. Yeah, I mean, I like it as well. Yeah. But I think I would have liked it better. Mm, better good. missed opportunity <laughs> <laughs> i like that mm-hmm. please always talk like that now no yeah. no <laughs> all right so we'll we'll finish up our episode tina comes up with a plan to get louise out of the trap everyone runs out of the building and onto the beach where the townspeople are gathered to watch the demolition the belchers don't notice the gold bars inside the taffy dummy so they head home pondering that maybe the journey was the treasure all along. Hmm. Hmm. You were wrong. There was actual treasure. God, guys, pay attention. 
So it seems strange to me that they would hide the treasure in one of the booby traps. But that's the last place you're going to be looking, right? You're right. But it's also not on the map that Teddy drew. And I doubt that's all of the treasure. Yeah, exactly. But there's probably a lot more Mm -hmm. sprinkled throughout the factory. Maybe a lot more dummies. Yeah, I think probably. That would make sense. I like that Tina at the end decides to throw away the book. And she says to herself, you know, I don't need to be an idiot just so a boy is going to like me. Mm -hmm. I am a smart, strong, sensual woman. Good for you, Tina. (sighs) Good for you, Tina. Because you know what? Girls don't value themselves enough. And I think a lot of girls, especially at that age, try to change themselves Mm -hmm. so that guys will like them. And it's just a whole load of horse crap. Right. Because the guys that you want to like you will like you for who you are. Exactly. Those are the guys that are worth liking. And honestly, I could have used this kind of moment, like when I was a kid, because I had a lot of this kind of problem when I started liking boys, um, you know, in like grade five and six. I thought that I should be quieter, and I thought that I should be less myself Mm -hmm. around them. Because I thought that if I was too loud or if I was too excitable, basically if I was just too myself, they wouldn't like me. They would think that I was weird. And I like that Tina just decides to throw that all away. Mm -hmm. It's a good message. If if Jimmy Jr. doesn't like me for who I am, then... His loss. Yeah, too bad. Girls aren't the only ones that go through that. Guys go through that a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I absolutely believe that. I went through that. I know friends that went through that. You think that... Girls will like somebody else, so you try to be somebody else. This is such a stupid thing. Like, Where did that even come from? It's so frustrating. And that's what Tina's doing. She's getting on that path now, which is nice. Mm -hmm. So Taff getting stuck to Bob is kind of too far for me. It's just like... (laughs) It's like, when is a show going to do that? In... When does that ever happen on television? I don't know, but I don't like it. (laughs) Like, I was fine with Bob not understanding why he still had an erection. And then Linda telling him. And then you see Bob in the rest of the episode kind of pulling his shirt down. Right. He's holding it over his business. And I get get it. Like, it's kind of funny because he's uncomfortable in that moment. And it's all Linda's fault. Like, if only he could get rid of it. Mm Mm-hmm. But then Taff getting stuck to him, all of a sudden it feels like just creepy, you know? Not a fan. I don't like it. I think... But I think the purpose of it was that we had to get Taff out of the factory as well. And there was no reason to bring him along if they didn't think that there was gold or treasure or anything inside of him. I have a super quick solution for that. What? It hits Bob in the face. Mm Mm-hmm. Like it's, and then he's like, oh, I can't get this thing off of me. It's, what is this made of? And then Louise shouts, it's taffy. It's sticky. That's it. Done. Yeah. Yeah. But instead we decided to make it a penis joke. Yeah. It was just not, not my favorite thing. So our final. Our final scene is kind of a reference to the Goonies because they all run out onto the beach and the town's there. The whole town's there. Yeah. And then, of course, there's treasure, but the thing is they don't end up noticing it Mm -hmm. at all. So, but we can't have them notice it because Bob can't suddenly get rich. I have another possible solution for this. Mm. They could have shown a bunch of taffy dummies floating off in the water out of the tunnel that nobody notices. And each of them, like, has gold sticking out of them. Mm. And then, I don't know, maybe seagulls come down or something and start pecking at it so it covers them all up. Right. Kind of like when we see the giant ship. At the end of the Goonies. At the end of the Goonies, right. yeah. So. And oh, I kept thinking at the end of that movie, like, someone get in a boat and go after that thing. Do <laughs> yeah. you know how much treasure is on there? That's One-Eyed Willie's treasure. You don't touch I that. I don't care. He is <laughs> dead. Get your damn treasure. Okay? The I- dead cannot use treasure or money, so I don't feel bad about taking theirs not that i'm gonna start grave robbing but i'm just saying like Mm -hmm. too bad one-eyed will you died anyway i like the other reference to the goonies that we have when louise is holding up taff and says 
Taff, you're coming home with me now. Yep, you're gonna that's... live with me now. And obviously reference the chunk and sloth. Yeah, that's why I thought that Taff was kind of like sloth, you know? Yeah. Louise gets attached to him, wants to bring him home. And then suddenly Linda's like, no, you can't bring that thing home. It's gross. And she's like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> Immediately, <laughs> a second later, nah. Yeah, which we wouldn't have in the Goonies, but we can do in this episode because Taff is not a person. Yeah. And we mentioned earlier that Louise has some growth in this episode. Like, mm-hmm. she ends up apologizing to her siblings, and it's nice to see that. She- and it looks like she actually means it. Oh, yeah. I believe she means it. Mm-hmm. I think she knows she was being harsh. And that maybe sometimes she gets a little laser focused when she's got a task. So before we get to our burgers, we've just got our final closing moments of the episode with Taffy Butt. Yeah. Sung our by Cindy, Cindy Lauper song. I love the credits. Mm-hmm. I adore these credits. Just because you like seeing Jimmy Jr. dance? I love, I just, I think it's great because we think at the beginning that it's just going to be regular credits and all of a sudden Jimmy Jr. slides in and and then we change the whole scene and, and he's dancing. Like he's really putting his whole heart into it. And then Tina ends up joining him and I just think it's so fun. It's a fun way to end this episode. It's mm-hmm. a fun way to start season two. And then, of course, there was a version put up on the internet later um, where they changed the song to Hotline Bling. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, and that goodness. is my favorite version. Oh. I will put that up on Twitter and I will link to it on Facebook as well because it's great. And his dancing actually really works with the song. So, hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that Cindy Lauper agreed to do the Taffy Butt version yeah. of Goonies Are Good Enough. Uh, apparently, uh, her son, Cindy Lauper's son, uh, Declan Wallace Thornton, liked Bob's Burgers, so he encouraged her to record the song when they asked her to do it. Oh, really? That's yeah. cute. She says, uh, my son really wanted me to do it. He loves the show and was like, come on, mom. It's hysterical. Do it. Oh, that's so cute. So she agreed to do it, which is great. Oh, that's nice. If you get a chance, listeners and Vivian, to watch the music video for The Goonies Are Good Enough, Oh my god. (laughs) It's so bad, but it's so good, and it's so weird, and so 80s, and so many questionable cameos. For some reason, it's it's also a two-part music video. The first part's like seven and a half minutes long. Oh my god. But it has cameos from, at the time, WWF wrestlers, World Wrestling Federation wrestlers. Like, a bunch of them. (laughs) Captain Lou Albano... Who would play Mario in the Super Mario Bros. show. The Super Mario Bros. Super Show. And it's got Rowdy Rowdy Piper, Wendy Richter, the Fabulous Moolah, the Iron Sheik, Nikolai Volkov, Freddy Blassie, and Andre the Giant. Who was in part two. But for some reason there's all these wrestlers in it. And it has nothing to do with the Goonies except half the wrestlers are like... Uh, the rich people come to buy out the neighborhood and uh, Captain Lou Albano and his wife are some of the residents of the neighborhood. And for some reason, Captain Lou has elastics as earrings and also hanging from one of his cheeks. And Cindy Lauper is like the owner of a gas station and it's so weird and it sounds like you're looking at me like I'm a crazy person, but this yep. exists <laughs> and this music video is totally crazy and hilarious to watch. And the Goonies are in it as cameos halfway through and suddenly Cindy Lauper is running through the caves trying to escape while being chased by some of these wrestlers and holy moly, it just goes on and on. And I thought it was only going to be like a three and a half minute music video, but then it's like seven and a half and then there's two parts and oh my goodness, it's amazing. Wow. It's a spectacle. It apparently It even features is. a cameo at the end where she, Cindy Lauper breaks the fourth wall oh, and is like, she's stuck in between these two pe- groups chasing her and she's in the middle of a rope bridge and there's water rushing and she's like, Steven Spielberg, how do I get out of this? Oh, and then goodness. it cuts out and he's like in the editing room and he's like, well, Cindy, I don't know. And then it cuts and then I guess there's part two where she escapes, but yeah. 
I don't even feel like I need to watch it now. You've told me enough about it. It's amazing. No, no, you have to watch it. It's so good. Yeah. (laughs) All right, then. So that's a good uh, transition, good segue into our... Burgers? Yeah, now my burgers are going to be nowhere near as amazing as those, the music video. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, on to the anyway. burgers of the week. Yeah, so these are our first burgers of season two, which is exciting. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. I didn't think of it like that. Yeah. Jason. Okay. I my you mind. Bring your A game. No, 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 no. Week, no. My mindset. No slacking. My mindset is start low and work my way up till the end of the season. Yeah. Uh-huh. Was yep. that uh, was that your idea last season too? Oh, bam! Pishesha. <laughs> oh, pishesha. <laughs> All right, so. What is your first burger? Oh, we're asking me, are we? Yeah, All right. I'm asking so, you. my first burger is looking for curried treasure. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> so yeah, it's a curry burger with a bunch of spices and stuff. I have a, a recipe for it actually that I will put up on our social media pages. But it sounds like a really tasty burger. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um, yeah, we'll we'll put those in our our show notes. All the recipes to our burgers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in case you feel like trying them out, go for it. So your first burger. All right, my first burger is Goonies never say tie. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. It's a turkey burger with lemongrass, crunchy Asian slaw, and cucumber ribbons. And yes, there is a recipe to this because I did not make it up myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I made the name, but uh, so it's like a yeah. Thai burger. Yeah, it's a Thai burger. Okay, Thai style. Yeah, Thai style. Goonies, Goonies never, never say Thai. Thai. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think Mikey would approve of it. I'm just saying. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's your second burger? So my second burger is. Hey, you fries! Oh my god, that was gonna be one of mine! No way! Seriously, Seriously? because I was trying to think of something that would work with hey, you guys. Yeah. And I was like, the only thing I can think of is fries. That works. (laughs) But then I thought, I don't want to do that because... It's amazing. A burger that comes with fries? No, it has fries on the burger. (laughs) Okay. Do you never do that? No. Oh, it's so good. Putting fries, like, on your burger is really tasty. Uh, yeah. So. I have not done that, but I have had onion rings on my burgers before. Which is and those also are really good. very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that's my second burger. Okay. Hey, you fries. Oh, my God. You uh, love it. You love it. This is ridiculous. This is bad. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let's hear your, your second burger, Miss I'm So Good. <laughs> I would never fall for one of One-Eyed Willie's traps. Oh, that's kind of funny because my burger is called the Treasure Snap. (laughs) The face you're making right now. Okay, listeners, Jason is like laughing, but so hard that it's not coming out as a sound. I'm trying to comprehend this. I don't get it. Treasure map, but treasure snap. Oh, okay. That's not as good now. <laughs> what? What did you think it was? Treasure trap? I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> okay, anyway, it's the treasure snap. And it would be... No, okay. And this is an actual burger that I looked up because I was trying to think of something treasury. Mm-hmm. You know? This burger would be made with Kobe beef. Uh, it would have caviar, black truffle brie, lobster, and the bun would be covered with gold leaf, and it would be served with roasted and salted snap peas. This is an actual burger. I'm not even kidding. Holy it is moly. an actual burger. Is the, it like the most expensive burger ever? It's one of the most expensive burgers ever. It's like incredibly expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's something that um, I believe was created in the u.s and when you're looking at it it's like the bun is gold it looks ridiculous Mm -hmm. might be good i will put a link to that because oh boy the picture of this burger is like intimidating (laughs) and really weird okay Mm -hmm. all right so we have goonies never say tie treasure snap 
Looking for curried treasure. Looking for curried treasure and hey, you fries. Exactly. So, which one's your favorite of your two? We can rock, paper, scissor this out. I like them both. Okay. So. I'll go with hey, you fries just because it's really stupid. Okay. <laughs> okay. And which one are you going to go with for mine? Oh, the first one. The first one? Go- Goonies never say tie? Yeah. Okay. Let's rock, paper, scissors this out. See who's the first winner of season two. I hate rock, paper, scissors. I always lose. Well, be better at it. <laughs> <laughs> all Sympathy right. is at an all-time low. Apparently. apparently. I can't even see your hand. Put it away from the microphone. Anyway, okay, go. One, two, three. Oh! Scissors. Jason won. I had paper. He had scissors. So our burger of the week, our first one of season two is Jason's Hey You Fries. <laughs> Yay. I gotta admit though, there was a lot of psychology in that rock, paper, scissors game. Was there? I played you. You played Jason. Mm-hmm. Past couple of games, I played rock. So I thought, what are you going to play? You're going to play paper, whether you realize it or not. So if you're going to play paper, then I'm going to play scissors. And Uh-oh. it worked. Maybe we need to start playing a fairer game then, Jason. Did you want to <laughs> play like a game of Monopoly to decide who wins? Because we'll be here all night. We'll be here all day. We'll be here all week. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we could just play dice. We could roll the dice and let the fates decide. Do we have dice? Sure, why not? Then let's do it. It's too late. I already won. Dang it. <laughs> hey, you fries! He's way too proud of that, guys. I'm happy. He's way too proud of that. <laughs> All right. So, that brings us to the end of Burger of the Week. A Multiverse Radio production. Thank you so much for listening. If you like our show, please leave a rating and a review on iTunes. If you have any comments or a punny burger name that you'd like to share, if you think you can come up with a better Goonies reference than the two of us, then go for it. You can find us on Twitter at Multiverse Radio or Facebook at Multiverse Radio Podcast. And you can also visit our website, multiverseradio.ca. Yeah, that's C-A because we are Canadian. Don't. A. Oh, my God. (laughs) And you can tell us if you do know any of our provinces. All right. That's the end of Burger of the Week. We will see you next week with our review of Season 2, Episode 2, Bob Day Afternoon. Love me some Bob Day. In which we meet our criminal mastermind, Mickey. Mickey. Love Mickey. Such a mastermind. Oh, it's going to be a good one. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. We'll talk at you later. <laughs> 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 <laughs>